Hello, I'm Pastor Horace Doughty in Lexington, Virginia, and each Sunday I'll bring you a Bible meditation by way of YouTube, and I encourage you to subscribe to Horace Doughty YouTube, that's D-O-U-T-Y, and share it with your family and your friends. Today, the title of the meditation is Two Kinds of Peacefulness. The Bible tells us, or gives us two stories, of, of each story there's a man sleeping during a storm aboard a boat. The first one is Jonah. Jonah boarded a ship at Joppa, headed to Tarshish, away from God and away from duty. There was a terrible storm and great fear among the crew, but Jonah was down into the inner parts of the ship Sound asleep, a scene on a big vessel on the Mediterranean Ocean. And the second picture is one from the Gospel, the New Testament, a little fishing boat manned by disciples who had recently been fishermen themselves, and there came up a sudden storm, and the disciples were paralyzed with fear. They panicked, but Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushions. Compare these two pictures. They're much alike. There's a mental peace and tranquility when other people are scared. They, these are parables of human life, reflecting two kinds of peace. And we can link these two stories together, I think, because I believe there is evidence that when Mark told his story, he was thinking of Jonah. The crew came to wake the sleeper, and they said, How can you sleep? And despite the resemblance, there are differences between the sleepers. Jonah, Jonah figured that he had escaped from God and duty, and Jesus was sure of God's presence and care. Now, Jonah had shaken off God. He left Israel and so left God. His mind is easy as he sleeps. When God comes in and demands, it does trouble us. Some of us can even evade the trouble by refusing to strive after better things, refusing to love, refusing to sympathize and to be compassionate and to bear burdens. Such people can go on their way, peaceful and comfortable, never having a sleepless hour because of their own faults or their brother's need. Here is the peace of not caring, the peace of ignorance. When the storm of the world swirls about those people, they curl into themselves and sleep. What When issues arise in the community or the nation or the world, they sleep. Leave me out of it, they say. We all want to be that way. It sounds enjoyable, less turbulent. We want to do like Jonah and get away from it. But the spark of the divine deep in us keeps us from peacefulness. Some may have the peace that the world gives of not being involved. This is not peace. This is ignorance and stagnation. We see the peace of God in Jesus there on the lake. We see how he bore himself in danger. He was calm and surprised at the disciples being so scared. Why are you afraid, he asked. Do you not have faith? He did have it. He knew they were in God's hand. He could bear the burden of the world without worry. He had the peace of God. Jesus lived among people who had worries, just as we do today. People who had no time for a religion like Jesus taught. But his, religious, his religion was for those people and for you. 
What shall we eat and drink and wear? These are the questions we still ask. And Jesus said, Seek the Lord, and these things will come. He actually told them to stop worrying about their livelihood. It sounds ridiculous. It, it really does. But I suggest try it and then judge it. Jesus had spiritual peace. And again, Jesus told them, not, don't worry. He said, fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Some people today take their religion too seriously until it borders on fanaticism, which is, has its faults. They need to hear and heed what Jesus said. Some are suffering political turbulence. And Jesus said, when you are brought before judges for my sake, do not worry beforehand what to say. It will be given you. And Paul said, do not worry about anything, but make your wants known to God by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. A peace coming from the habit of keeping your soul turned toward God. That is real peace. God has never promised to keep storms away or to make storms easy, but He will be with you in the storm. He does promise that. And this is a lesson we do well to learn in this precarious time that we're living. We have much to make us afraid, there is so much to lose. Our status, our property, our happiness, our lives, our world, our boat could be swamped, and we feel that. And Jesus says, why are you afraid? I am with you, even to the end of the age. Amen. God bless you all.